we as developers like to use uh, latest libraries, and I uh, bet that a lot of you can uh, relate to this uh, picture because sometimes upgrading a library is not a uh, easy thing, and uh, it's good that we don't want to upgrade uh, like randomly because. Uh, uh, they, uh, if we ha encounter issues, we uh, might need to wait for them to be fixed. But uh, there are times that the issue is not so uh, uh, hard to manage, and we can uh, fix it either within our project or uh, if we are feeling lucky, uh, uh, create a pull request to the uh, library itself. So in my talk, I will talk about upgrading with confidence and uh, uh, dealing with the issues based on the uh, project I've uh, worked I work on so my name is Chris Trześniewski uh, I'm a senior front end developer at Scala C you can find me on uh, Twitter uh, via this handle and uh, the slides are available under this link I will post them uh, after the uh, presentation on on Twitter so what's the story? Uh, the project I, I'm working on is uh, using Angular. Uh, we work with GraphQL API. And uh, to talk to this API, we use Apollo Client with Angular Apollo on top of it. And the, la uh, the latter one is actually the vil villain of the story. So uh, why did we actually want to upgrade it? So the uh, latest version of, Angu uh, of Apollo Client is easier to customize. We can extend it with our custom uh, links. Uh, the API is clear, and uh, it also implements query batching, which means that if we perform a lot of queries, uh, there will be only few. Uh, there might be only few uh, requests needed to uh, to the API. Uh, and last but not least, it provides integration with NGRX and other, other uh, state management tools. So, okay, so let's just upgrade, right? Well, uh, looking at the documentation, it looks uh, looked like so. Uh, the upgrade path was pretty clearly stated. Uh, the API hasn't changed so much. Uh, and uh, the left one is from the version 1, and the uh, right one is from the version 2. The only change for the queries was uh, adding these value changes. Now, what query returns a wrapper around an observable? Uh, so, it seems ready after an hour or two of migrating stuff. Let's npm start. Well, something clearly is happening. And I wasn't happy about it. Uh, so, but uh, in situations like that, we uh, like that we need to keep calm, grab a cup of coffee, maybe a donut, and start to Google. So, a few hours later, long story short, it turns out that uh, oops, what happened? Resume. Uh, that. Obser observable var variables, a feature which was uh, implemented in version 1, is no, no, not implemented in version 2, and they uh, forgot to mention that in the documentation. Well, so what, uh, are, are, what are those uh, observable variables? If, we, if you look at this part of code, the uh, actual variables are uh, observable, so w uh, whenever in previous version, whenever the, uh, any of those variables emitted a new value, uh, the query would be, uh, 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 there will be a new query to the uh, GraphQL and we would get the latest uh, values via the value changes observable. Well, that's not the case anymore. And uh, this is a visual representation of that. So we have the uh, example of two variables. And uh, whenever any of those changes, uh, we would need to perform so many queries to the API 
to up update our uh, uh, data. And to, to those of you who have been working with observables uh, at least some time, uh, it might be clear that this is just a combined latest operator and uh, to achieve that. So it seems manageable that we can implement that ourselves. So let's see the first solution. Uh, looks like so. In the first line, we need to transform our uh, object w uh, which contains multiple observables into one single observable which uh, emits every time any of those changes. So uh, this is just combined the latest with some mapping afterwards. And then we pipe those variables through the switch map. And uh, every time we turn a new watch query with uh, just a simple, uh, simple plain object as variables. And this works already. But uh, as you might see, a new watch query is uh, created every time we get new uh, variables. So it's not ideal. So let's improve it a bit. So the first line doesn't change. And then we create, uh, qu uh, we create query, query ref uh, up front with the additional option of uh, fetch results to false, not to perform uh, an empty, uh, a request with empty variables. And then we, uh, every time the variable change, variables change, we uh, perform a set variables on, on the query ref and it will call the API and then uh, the value changes will emit the results. Okay, so only one watch query, but Let's back up a, li a little. Uh, we started with that and ended up with that. Well, I w uh, we, can all, uh, uh, we can wrap it in some wrappers, and that's actually what we did in the project, but uh, it's not ideal. So a week ago, I uh, came with the fight uh, to uh, get to the ultimate goal of not changing anything in the uh, watch query itself. And uh, as I said in the beginning, Apollo client uh, gives us uh, uh, the possibility to extend it via the links. And this is done using the so-called middleware. And how, uh, how do we apply those to, to our Apollo client? Whenever we create uh, a new instance of Apollo, uh, we provide it with a set of options, including a link. In the basic example, it would be just this HTTP link, uh, so we can just perform queries to the to the API. But we will uh, before before it enters this stage, we will uh, uh, prepend it with our handle observable variables uh, link and implemented. So this is just a helper. Uh, Eric's.js link is uh, part of the library. I will link at the end of the presentation. And on every, on op uh, whenever we get a new operation, uh, it, will be handled, uh, it will be handled in the request handler. So request handler uh, gets a stream of operations and is supposed to return another stream of operations. Uh, and we have to run it outside of Angular Zone. Uh, not important. Uh, so we get the operations. We pipe it through the switch map. Uh, and now check, checking if the variables are actually uh, the observable variables, because that's only the case we want to uh, implement. Again, we combine variables and. Uh, switch mapping to a new operation i uh, i can show you the implement the whole implementation af uh, after the talk and just to return a new operation with the with this plain simple variables object uh, as a parameter and otherwise we just pipe uh, if we are dealing with uh, normal variables we just pipe it through the to the next link uh, uh, without anything Okay, so did we uh, actually reach the ult ultimate goal? Well, almost. So uh, I 
I wanted to achieve this, but for now, uh, we have to wrap those variables inside of the context, because otherwise it's blowing into my face. Uh, but it's still nice. So, thank you for your attention.